Hey there, this is John, your lovable GM, and you're listening to Demon Days, an actual play podcast where they focus on fiends and the friends who play them. Want to quick give a shout out to our sponsor, Arknight, whose props, maps, and minis make our table a delight. They've been with us since the beginning, and we love them oh so much. Also want to give a shout out to Kilowatt, who's done the artwork for our show. Our heroes have never looked so good. We'll put all those links in the show notes. Without further ado, let's jump into the game, shall we? Fritz. Fiends! You're telling me that you got a wizard to freeze your ale onto sticks and that you can lick these ale sickles on your travels to beat the heat. Brilliant! I'll take them all. First, I, I do suppose I should continue our story. The party had just defeated the vile marrow party and saved some merfolk in the process. Let's see what happens next for our heroes in these Demon Days. The fish creature. It starts to flee, and at just the last possible second, you see Shark Sunny thrash out and grab with her mouth and just grab onto the tail, whip it around, and smash it against the rock wall. And uh, that's it for him. Bringing this combat to a close. All the evil fish creatures are dead. Darn, I was gonna bong bong. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. <laughs> You're gonna bong, 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 bong. <laughs> so and, I'm gonna go uh, after my knife, and uh, the whole time kind of be calling back at the other guy, like, "Hey, oi, fish boy, you okay? You can't understand me. Why do I think you can understand me? <laughs> Are these side things?" like sheer walls or is there space that we can actually climb up onto them it's sheer fuck yeah now right now the fish person the merfolk is when you yelled at them fetter they didn't exactly register they understood they jumped like startled so they heard you but the way that they're clinging to the wall in fear for now doesn't seem like they understand what you're saying fuck Anyone talk fish? Hey, it's f fucking fine. Hey. <laughs> I mean, I could, but it'll take time. Right, well. Uh, I don't think, yeah, speak with animals will not work with this. <laughs> I was just checking speak with animals. I was like, does Kinsani do that? I mean, she can do speak with animals, but. Oh, wait, comprehend languages is only for written, not spoken. Yeah, that would be tongues. No, that's for... Yeah, it would be tongues to no, get them to be able to no, talk. No, comprehend, comprehend languages you can cast to understand them. You just can't talk back, I think. Oh, oh no, it is for spoken language, too. You see, um, Sunny, you notice that she's back into her form. Somewhere between, you know, slamming the fish against the wall and back there, she transformed back, got out of her wild shape, and she's swimming slowly to... Recover to get out of that form, and she's trying to head towards the person very gently, just kind of cooing, and it seems to be making some headway. The merf person, the merfolk, is starting to calm down, but it's not going as quickly. Fuck. Fuck! I'm just like, yeah, looks down at my... Anyone? Okay. God damn. I'm going to dive down underneath and see if I can see what's on the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of the lake. The, at the bottom. Yeah, considering they came up from underneath us, like, I want to see what's kind of just swimmed out and see what's underneath there. Okay. Given that you can breathe underwater, it's... The only effort is just your strength, so you're taking you a little bit while longer, just given your, your strength score, but mm -hmm. you managed to get down there a few minutes, and you notice that there are a lot of structures underwater, uh, and you, you can kind of see the forms of them, because a lot of them have a bit of bioluminescence on them. And they, they have a little sheen or a brightness to them down there, mm -hmm. especially the ground floor. There's a few various places that are built that, s that give a little bit of light. Not so much that you could have seen it from above on the surface, but just down enough. It's enough to get a visibility of what you're doing. And you see some structures. And as you're down there, your high perception notices that you see 
furtive peeking out from various structures in worry and peeking back as if like what what happened and they're not entirely sure what to make of you you see you can see a few different buildings that have a few faces that pop out of various other uh, fish people i'm trying to think what thaumaturgy if there's anything i could do that wouldn't just be scary all right i'm gonna use uh fuck it this is probably gonna spook them anyway are, are we still in rounds uh no not anymore no uh, I'm going to use disguise self to look like one of them. Just like turn myself into one of them. Okay. And and like try to wave them up to the surface. Okay. But like I want to be like mer person Jesus. I want to be very handsome. Ah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mer person. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you, like little Nas X. Jesus. Like just like live and attractive and just like wave them. <laughs> <laughs> if you talked, if you spoke in English, you'd sound like Thane from Mass Effect 2. Just that deep, like, rich, mm-hmm. you know, vo- like, yeah, you, you got the whole package. You, you've seen, in, you were able to deduce what Handsome would look like from the f- very fair looking merfolk who's up above, freaked out, to get a handsome visage. And yeah, uh, a few more people poke out, a few more uh, merfolk poke out and, and glance your way. And a lot of them seem to be a bit younger, a couple, some, like, they, there's not really any middle age Mm-hmm. If you could really gauge that very well, you would need a heavy nature check just to get a sense. But you get the sense that there are, there are, there's old and there's young, and there's not exactly a lot of in between, based off a of size. And between the two of them, they seem to believe what you're doing. Right. There, enough of them haven't seen you. Enough of them didn't see you make the transformation because they're furtively glancing between their buildings. Right. That they start to they're starting to come out All right. a little bit and swim out and cautiously like. Uh, adjust their head in the water, like kind of bob it, get a feel. I can't talk to any of these people, so I'm just going to surface. Like once I do that, I kind of pop up and be like, yeah, okay. So uh, we've got uh, the elderly and some children uh, still down in some sort of structure, some town down there. Uh, I've tried to wave them up. Who knows? Uh, Oh yeah, it's me, by the way. Sorry. Don't shoot. (laughs) Uh, I'm guessing all their warriors are over there on the beach. Yeah, fighting or have fought or are away fighting somewhere else. Um, Yusuf is going to drop down. He's just going to stop treading water and just sink. Okay. Yeah, and it takes you a little bit because it's a pretty deep basin here. You saw what Fetter saw similarly, but now there's a lot more people out, a lot more uh, mer- merfolk emerging from their places. And... It takes towards, like, when you're sort of like, maybe you should go back up again just to see how things are going. Yeah, like, I I drop down enough, like, my sword's still in my hand, and if, if I see a lot of them, like, I'll put it, I'll sheathe it, and you, he'll just wave. Like, he waves at everybody, he waves at the kids, and then he kind of looks around and swims back up. Okay, uh, do a performance, uh, performance check on that. Uh, 13. I am going, I'm leaning into, um... My feature of, uh, not my feature, but my background is folk hero. Okay. Feature rustic hospitality. Since you come from the ranks of the common folk, you fit in among them with ease. You can find a place to hide, rest, or recuperate among other commoners unless you have shown yourself to be a danger to them. They will shield you from law or anyone else searching for you, though they will not risk their lives for you. I'm basically just like putting my sword on and be like, and like just showing that we mean them no harm and then I'm going back up to the surface. Yeah, uh, as you start to go back up to the surface, you notice one particular merfolk. It is bald, except for a bunch, uh, like a ponytail of white hair and a white beard. It's my dad. It comes up to you, and you have a brief moment, and it's this felt very similar to how you felt when you escaped your troubles at Cania, and you you met um, Chesterfield. There's a, a, a similar wizened sense. It gives you a brief flashback of that. Seeing cautious people emerging, seeing an older, wise and more um, leader-like approach you, and approach you without the fear and with understanding. And he too waves and points up and follows you up to the surface. Um, When I get to the surface, uh, I'm going to... I get to the surface, I'm going to start swimming over to the, the one who's near Sunny. Okay. By now you see that Sunny has circled around towards the shore, uh, around the other side of the merfolk, and is doing her similar, like, kind of cooing. It sounds very gentle, and it is working now. It's She's been doing it enough that the merfolk is calming down, and it's not quite until 
you see the other that merfolk sees the older one appear that she eases just completely eases up calms down and the other merfolk joins you guys he uh he's gonna continue to swim to the shore and um wait for Sunny to get there but like as he crawls up on shore he's just kind of kind of like flop and and lay on his back on the on the sand and as soon as Sunny gets the other merfolk to the the shore he'll kind of sit up and he's gonna cast uh cure wounds on her okay Sunny will help and Taslin and Fedor you see that going on and you also to the two of you also see the other merfolk pop up again older white hair white beard seems very much um carries itself like the himself like the leader and he starts heading that way towards the merfolk the one who's been in hot water this whole time right so that everyone's moving that direction she gets 11 points back i say like, hey he's the guy he's can we does anybody have any fuck i can like i can like listen to their <laughs> thoughts for like a minute but that's not gonna help for shit anybody uh, do you say that out loud yeah Okay, uh, as he's passing by, the, the older fish person, <laughs> Merfolk, stops, turns to you. I do speak some common. Hey. I can converse. Great. But I must care for mine. And he heads towards, he turns back and speeds over to his charge. I'll and swim after him and be like, must care for yours. I feel like we did all the caring. Like, you're very welcome, by the way. Um, and as you get closer, uh, Fetter, to the, all that, you do see that he, he too is wounded. Harder to see underwater. Okay. I just want to do like a general insight check on this dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like it's a pretty straight story, but why not? Oh, yeah. Not the, not my best. Uh, 11. Okay. Uh, he, didn't roll, he didn't roll very well. Now he's on the up and up. He's legit. Very much uh, going to care for this one fish person, uh, Merfolk. <laughs> this one, he's going to care for the Merfolk that almost didn't make it. And uh, yeah, as you all get there, he turns... Thank you. Thank you, all of you. I don't know what would happen if we, if I lost this one. I am, I am Blick. We are what remains of the merfolk here under, under the mountain. We should talk. What, what are you doing down here? He looks genuinely concerned. Oh, you know, we're on a sightseeing tour. We're here to go scope out the Titan. He perks the... The giant one. Yeah, we hear he's fucking up all your neighbors. We want to see if we can fix it. Oh, that is a bad... That's a bad place. You hear from the weak merfolk, uh, kind of a high-pitched shrill, and he shushes Erno. Do not speak. It's... You must heal. What could you possibly need with that? We hope to cleanse it. I I try to hide a flashed look over to Taslin. Yeah, totally. 100%. (laughs) Definitely going to cleanse it. (laughs) The Merfolk brightens, but still remains cautious. Cleanse it. Restore our waters. It is dangerous over there. A foul creature guards it, has carried off many of ours. Uh, flying cat person? Cat. Cat person. It searches. I like shift, I like shift my face to look like a cat. But I still have mm. like a mer person's body, so I look like some sort of uh, deviant art, you know, <laughs> cat made mer cat, mer cat. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Aquatic tabaxi. Yeah, and then I yeah. change it back <laughs> like that. It does not quite look like that. Walks on all fours, wings. It has changed ex- appearance. It, I mean, it it kind of looked that way before. But it has undergone much transformation. It looks around. And actually registers, finally registers all the bodies that are on the shore, too. This. <sighs> he looks like he recognizes every single one of them. That's not the vicious fish creature. My family. <sighs> it says something in, a, in its speech that can only translate to fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right, so settle a, a bed for us, Elder. These, uh... These folks, uh, the gnarly looking folks with the black spots, are they your neighbors or are they ones of your group that have uh, been transformed by the corruption? They were once of us, yes. They were transformed, although it took a long time and generations to fully get to this place. We called them, oh, what do we say? We called them the Marrow. They are vicious monstrosities of what we once were. 
this thing, this darkness from the giant one has reduced our livelihood and transformed our weakest of mind into these things. And what you've seen here, what you see here is the end for us. (sighs) But we sit here on the shore. I must give you hospitality for what you've done. Do you have means to breathe underwater? Yeah, we're straight. For the next uh, day or so. Let us provision you and heal you and uh, find a cove where we can talk. I noticed wood shards. You were traveling by boat. I believe we can find something for you to help you travel. But come, we must take some rest. What do we, uh, what do we call you, Elder? Blick is what I am referred to in the common tongue. Like, like, blick? Like, blick. Where's the, ac- where's the accent there, Blicky? Blick, <laughs> It is abrupt. It would be more blick. Sure. Like, blick, flick em. Yep. <laughs> Blickly flick em. Yeah, um, great, blick. Uh, well, lead the way, friend. All right, um... Follow me. And he does guide you. He starts... It takes a little while, uh, because he's obviously versed in the water and swimming, and you guys can't go as fast. So he does scoot ahead uh, as you travel back to the basin where you were just fighting, and then you start to head down south, and he'll get ahead, scout, make sure there's no attack coming, come back, guide you, and do that back and forth. As you guys lead your way down into what is another basin. So you're going from one basin to a shallow corridor that opens out into another one to the south. And he stops in about the middle. And we call this Soothpaw, our south pass. There is a lodging underneath the water where we can rest up. There's also, and in this case, uh, Taslin, Yusuf, and Fetter, um, right here towards the southeast, there is a bit of a ledge that would be just enough for you guys all to be on if you wanted to make a hut there. You notice that it's pretty rocky and uneven, but you could do something there. And there's also a lot of loose ground below. If you want to do a a perception investigation down there, that you could do your hut down there too. Yeah, I'll I'll get down there and do do the old investies. Uh, That is a 15. Yeah, that building centrally to the west a little bit is the main quarters. You get the sense that it's Blix. He heads in there, swims back out, points to it, speaks through the water a little bit, but then comes back up. Uh, This is where I stay. There are some provisions, some food that you can take with you. Uh, We have carved for various visitors over the years a ledge if you need to stay above water. But this is our last refuge here against the marrow threat and the threat of the giant one. Uh, There's a few who are in the basin above to the north, but we were trying to take that back. We're Doing what we can. How, uh, how, how often do the marrow come to attack? Every day. There are more and more of them. Oh, great. So, uh, with this lot dealt with, do you think we'll see another, uh, another group in the morning? If we're lucky, no. Me and a few others will leave the bodies around and prepare them in such a way that it looks like a fresh battle. They may buy us an extra day or half a day, but it'll be enough of a distraction. We won't have to fear anything coming from the west because it's shallow ground. They will not come through there. And that'll be where we'll send you uh, on your way if you want to get to the giant one. Directly to the giant one is a fool's errand. In in what way? It is the most direct. That's where most of them come from, the Marrow. Their attacks come from the north and central to that main basin where you guys were just now. That is kind of their main mode of attack. And he starts to gesture and do his best to paint you a picture Mm-hmm. with a few different pieces of leaves and things like that. And essentially what it boils down to is that middle central basin you guys were fighting in, that e- that exit to the north, there seems to be a hive, uh, a congregation of marrow there. And he points that, like, there are more there uh, that wait for stragglers. There are opportunists. And then he points to the west exit, towards directly towards the giant one. More come from the polluted waters around that area come through here and channel to find who they can. They are more diligent and more aggressive. More of the magical ones come from that direction. And west of here, the South Pa, what's out that way? It is shallow ground and similarly another little mini, a very small beach of sand. Enough for maybe you all to stand on it, but not a lot. 
but just enough to get you some bearing before you continue on the deeper water. And you think that uh, this this western path from here is the best way to head to the Titan? Yes. I believe you might find another boat down there where there's a few that float around. They are usually watched, but this west path is much tuck, much more tucked away, harder to get to. We will try to help we will try to help you get an easier mode of travel traversal. Unless you wish we could send a few merfolk with you to guide you, hold on to you, and give you a boost of speed. It's disconcerting. Well, uh, Black, I think we'll have to, uh, talk amongst ourselves. We obviously don't want to leave you without, uh, defenses for your people. We can only do what we must. We are of a very apocalyptic mindset here, and it's sad, but if you are here to truly restore our waters, it's going to take what... You're going to have to take as much time as you need. We cannot hope for more than that and just hold out as long as we can. Black, we have heard that uh, that the Titan leaks from somewhere on its side under the water. Do you know of that? I do have some information to that regard. I would, if you will let me uh, spend some time to heal myself, if I r- return to you in an hour, would that be sufficient? Then we can trade in information, give you guys a chance to rest and heal up. Certainly. Yes, Tiefling needs a nap. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, it, we are okay for the time being in here. I will be down in my quarters underwater. I will check in on you when I have a, a more clear head. Well, uh, what do we think, gang? Should we head to this ledge? I mean, if we're going to take an hour rest, we're just going to have to get wet again. And we have the ability to breathe under here. Try. So show of hospitality and good faith and bunk out in one of these uh, underwater lodgings. Sunny pipes up. Uh, Taslin, could you, are you, would your hut work underwater? It, yes. Yes, it would. She's still a little bruised up from the fight, but kind of smirks. That would be kind of cool. It can work in space, too. Yeah, I'd, I'd sleep underwater. It's a interesting proposition. Let's hut it up. <laughs> Let's hut it up. Hut smut. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's there's a, there's enough of an opening. Uh, you can kind of see it here, uh, towards the south a little bit from Blick's hut. There's like kind of a clearing between a bunch of houses that surround it in a circle. Uh, structures, not houses. It's hard, hard to tell their purpose. Probably lodging, but and a few bits of rock down there. But there's enough clearing to where you could actually do your hut underground if you wished. Or underwater, if you wished. I was like, I mean, I can do it underground, too, but... <laughs> <laughs> it would help yeah. because even though we can breathe underwater, we don't necessarily stop floating when we sleep, so... We just right. bounce up against the top, like... <laughs> yeah. Tink. Just Tink. like, boink, doink, doink. Blake's like, oh no, they died. Yusuf points to his, his armor, he's like, Got weights. <laughs> Meanwhile, Yusuf just sleeps soundly underwater, like on the ground. <laughs> yeah, but then you'd yeah. have even more pressure on you, and you'd probably have even more negatives if you slept in it. Well, I don't know, because with <laughs> my weight, uh, the weight of my body being like just kind of buoyant, I might just feel like a nice hug. Mm-hmm. Is this? A, I finally just take. A, I realize I've been breathing underwater, and I just kind of taste the water. Is this brackish, John? Is it fresh water? What does it taste like? Uh, down here, it's much more clear. Um, you have a comparison when you were up in that central basin that the water was a bit brackish, rougher to the taste. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you could sense that there was something off about it. Okay. Even with the way when you guys were in the water fighting, like the water felt weird. This feels a bit more natural. Like, un- not quite as touched by the darkness, mm-hmm. relatively speaking. But that's an idea, right? Like a dark tank, you could float in it, you know? Put some salt in it. <laughs> you could probably market these. Anyway, whatever. We we theme it around the merfolk. Anyway, that's that's for when we're not dying. <laughs> um, so, hut? Right, so, I mean, should... Yeah, should we just... I was uh, probably taking... I was probably taking the ten minutes to set it up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Underwater, you take the 10 minutes, and that f- force, that hut, a force, <laughs> and the water agitates around it, and yeah, you've got a clear hut 
a submerged hut that you can kind of see out under the water like a... Well, from the outside, it looks like a rock. It just looks like a brown rock. Yeah. But from inside, you guys can see out, and it looks kind of neat. Yeah, on the inside, it's it's transparent. So we've got a total, like, underwater aquarium kind of bubble thing going. Fun. in a Jaws 2 feeling here. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you guys find yourself in that central hut. And yeah, it's dry. It's go in. well ventilated. And Short rest. At least, yeah. Fit die. Don't be an asshole. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and while you guys are short resting, you'll see that a few of the merfolk have migrated back south from that central area, and a few of the younger ones swim by, curiously looking at this dome, uh, kind of sniff, like, not sniff around it, but kind of tilt their head and bob it a little bit to get a sense of the water, and, like, tap it, and like, oh, what, this is weird, we've never seen this, like, rock here before. <laughs> and, yeah, other than that, yeah, you have your, you have the, the place to yourselves. Fantastic. Almost the whole way to full. Well, uh, where's Blake? He said it would be an hour. Like one hit point away from full. You are? Nice. Yeah. Well, I also burned like a whole ton of hit points uh, or Mm -hmm. a whole ton of hit die. As it gets to about the end of that hour, Sonny offhandedly mentions like, this place is pretty rough. Does Sonny take, uh, does Sonny heal at all? Um. Does she use hit dice for a short rest? Well, she was all sharked up, right? She, yeah, she took a little bit of damage before she sharked up, so she's about half her health, so she could use her hit dice, so yeah, she'll use it. Fetter, how are you looking? I'm good, mate. <clears throat> Just trying to figure out how to smoke underwater. Well, we're not underwater <laughs> right now. Well, we are, but it's air. Like, you can smoke in the hut. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, we talked about hot box in the dome, you know? I'm a gentleman. I'm not going to do that <laughs> shit. Uh, Sonny's like, after the fight we had, uh, I think you're fine. I could I could go for a little bit of second hand. That's really funny. I'm gonna just like <laughs> smoke and then put my head outside the bubble and then blow it out and then <laughs> yeah. put my head back in the bubble. One of the times you do that, you happen to do that as one of the younger uh, merfolk are poking around and they and they 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 swim off to tell their who are their relative an unbelievable story. I I ineffectually yell after them like, "Don't smoke. It's bad for you." <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, and you guys all saw that too. And yeah, by now, Blake does show up. And uh, he starts to go to the surface from his place, looks and sees the new rock there. I poke my head out and I'm like, come on in. Have a rest. He comes in and yeah, Tazlin, you would have to let him in. Yeah, I guess you would. Taz, you want to let Blake in? You want to leave him out? What do you think? Uh... I mean, I just got my suit dry. <laughs> I think, I don't think I have to allow them in. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me check this out cuz I haven't I don't think I can add it to my spell list. But hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I figured it was like Discord permissions. Mm-hmm. Like okay, turn on the merfolk feature. Okay, cool. Or friends of friends. Mhm. <laughs> I mean, it does say that creatures or objects are barred from passing through it, but it didn't say anything about me having to allow people in. So, sure, we'll go with that. I'll be like why, well, yes, okay. he may come in, although air may be difficult. I mean, we saw a bunch of dead bodies in the land, so. Uh, yeah, Merfolk, uh, well, if you want to do a nature check on it, you can, but uh, it's... Nah. He comes in, Blake pops in and and coils into a, enough of a position where he can be comfortable. Uh, and quickly enough, okay, you realize so that. Okay, so actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. This would be... Fuck! I think, uh, a your rule here. So the way that it, it's actually written is that creatures and objects within the do- dome when you cast the spell. So the fact that we were all like within it when it went up meant that they could like move back and forth in it, but he would have to like if he was outside of it, he wouldn't be able to come in it. Period. But like if you want to like house rule, like it could be something to where like I have to allow permissions in or something. Yeah, uh, I feel like flavor-wise, allowing permissions would solve a lot of that. Cool. So yeah, you you would have to explicitly allow it um, and be able to witness. We'll we'll put a restriction on it uh, here and codify it that you have to be able to see them and you have to directly give them permission. Uh, sort of like how you let a vampire in, just like I you may come in. It's verbal to that extent. So if mm. I revoke their invitation, does that mean they get thrown out? Sure. Cool. With that said, he does a. Uh, appear in 
and coil to a comfortable position, you discover pretty quickly that he can breathe both air and water. And he looks a little bit better. He looks like he's taken some healing and some medicine and bandaged up. His wounds are covered up and he's doing all right. He eyes you all. Thank you again for saving my charge. Of course. I'm happy to do it. It is no small thing and I fear as the only leader, more often than not, I save a few and lose more and it is my burden. But anyways, I trust you want some information. Uh, whatever you feel comfortable sharing, yeah. Well, we've been here for generations. But the thing about us, us merfolk, is that we have a history, an ancient history, actually. Long ago, it uh, was said that we were given dominion over the sea by the great goddess Mira, and all of Vistal was our charge. And she created us in an abundance of love, and we were to be stewards of her domain. And for a time, that was good. Of course, the gods, the upper ones, the ones above water, decided to wage war on each other, using this continent as its battleground. Naturally, oceans became land and mountains became river and nothing was untouched. As a result, our Mera was slain and we were scattered. Our radiance diminished with her absence and we sought to find whatever pieces of her we could. Anything that... <sighs> Any searches for the word. Smelled? No. Felt of the old ways, the old magic. And it's kept us from going fully extinct. And we found something from the old time in this giant one. And we thrived here. Except that changed when a strange topsider slew another on the giant one's hand and stole from them. As legend puts it, they removed their arm and their part of their face and scattered the remains into our water. And then things began to go dark. Darkness started to form. And generations later, and I'm sitting here telling you this now. Whoever this topsider was brought ruin to us, possibly taken away the radiance that we've been living off of. And that's a really simplified version of what I have for you. Hopefully it's something. Hopefully it tells you something or gives you information that you need. It's not much, I'm afraid. Right, so how long ago, you said several generations, how long ago did these topsiders wage war on the Titan? A multitude of generations, ages upon ages. This is story for us at this point myth but considering how bad things have become it's much more believable now but long ago when these waters were all fresh and we were just mere folk in search of a home time is much different under the water here than maybe it is for you topsiders hundreds of generations that's really all i can gauge at the minimum very good now this leak uh how far down how tall would you say the titan is and uh, how far down would you say this leak uh is have you seen it have you have your scouts seen it could you point us in the direction of it we could we could um granted we can't get very close to it now but when we have been there it's hard to describe and he starts to move his hands to tr attempt to visualize it the darkness surrounds it right now, but it doesn't seem to originate from here. It seems to draw from another source. We cannot have not been able to discover it, but it does not seem to originate from the statue, from the from the giant one itself. No, is it uh, perhaps like a rift in the water, a, a tear, like you would tear your garment? He looks down. Perhaps. I flash a look over at Taz and Yusuf. I could explain some things. 
but the thing about it is it's hard to tell in those waters where things are. You you can see out in the water, he looks and finally realizes that it's not a rock. <laughs> you can actually see the, the ocean like, huh. <laughs> huh. <laughs> you can see here better than the central basin you found us in. Over there it is thick. Practically no visibility for even us. It's hard to determine a source and we can't... There's not even a, a sense of movement in the water to give us any clue or hint. But it is too dangerous over there to even try. Sure. Well, uh, any other helpful tidbits you might have there, Blick? Anything else on your mind? Anything that would help your people? Can't promise anything, but any info is good info. I guess I would say use the haste you've been charged with, and we will hold out as long as we can. I would warn against the creature that guards the hand right now. It is violent, but it's violent against us and even the cursed Miro. So, you may fare better, but be cautious. If what you say is true that it was once a cat-like thing, it has become much bigger. We call it a, a, a lizard now at this point. A lizard, the shadow lizard. Fantastic. Who hate? No one, no one hates a shadow lizard. With wings? Yeah. Fantastic. And now, uh, if there's anything more I can provide you, don't hesitate to ask. I should get back to my people. Do you need anything from me? Can I provision you with anything? We don't have much. Um, I hate to ask, but uh, any healings or potions or any stored bits of your magic would be helpful. Um, I will I will see what we can find. We may have a few. Any, uh, if you had any stones or rocks, anything... Uh, I fear we've come across in our travels rifts in space and time that we believe originate in the abyss and uh, they cause uh, tears where the abyss itself is able to leak through. This could be tied to the Titan or not, but we've been able to channel some power through stone, precious stone, and close the rift, so anything you might have could be of use to us. I do not believe... We have anything in our corner. There are a few other pockets. Maybe there are survivors who might know more, but mm, there's not much resource here to pull on anymore. And nothing that would be of worth or a gem or a value that you speak that I have seen. Well, thank you, Blake. I think we have much to discuss. We may uh, rest here longer um, before we head off, but uh, I need to speak amongst ourselves for a bit. Indeed. Uh, before you head off, uh, come see me again. We will try to find you a better mode of conveyance, if we can. I will spare a scout, and we will try to find something worthwhile for you. There are There is much detritus and debris out there. I think we'll be able to manage something for you. But do let me know. Thank you. All right, we... I look at the group. We, uh, we think we might just stick around here, healing up for the next few hours. Yusuf nods. Yes. Yeah. If 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 anyone can, we are we are we need to make a bit of haste, Blick. But if you can uh, come across something in the next seven or so hours, or, you know, part of a half a day. I don't know how you guys clock time, don't you? A quarter of a day or so. We'll 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 still be here. Indeed. We will. I will send someone to look, and uh, we will make it a priority. And please uh, don't put yourself out too hard. But you know, we got to big fight planned that we think would benefit you. Anything you could spare, we could use. Indeed. I will make that my priority. And he nods, uncoils, hesitantly, before leaving. Like, okay, I hope I can actually leave. He gives a look to you guys and then darts out of the the hut and gets back into the swimming and shakes off the... Like, that's weird. Looks back at the rock. It, uh and swims back to his structure, leaving you guys once again alone under the water, under the sea, under the crappy sea. Right, so, um... Under the sea. What do we think, gang? Do we do we think that it's... Listen, if as long as the, the, the fate of the world's not at stake, I'm always going to try to play both sides towards the middle, and I think that, you know, what if, uh, you know, we can... 
aid the Raven Queen, but somehow still close the fissure that seems to be polluting the waters. Do you think that's a possibility? Is it worth investigating, or should we just head to the hand? Call that that. I think it's... Personally, I think it's all connected. I'm wondering if... I mean, I haven't known Eldath long, but I don't think she would steer us in a course that would not help purify the area, and I'm wondering if that same toxin is what's going through the Raven Queen. Yeah, but let's think of it this way. Is it like if the Titan is a magical engine, a magical battery of some sort, right? And different forms of power flow through it. If we still need the battery, and I'm trying to like, you know, look at him in such a way as to say things without saying them in front of Sunny, you know, we need the battery to run a certain way, but the the engine has a leak and it's spitting out fuel into the area. Like, what if there were a way to plug the fuel leak but keep the battery, the engine, running the way that it currently is? Do you catch my meaning? I do. There might be a way to do that. If there is, I say we do it. I mean, Taz, what are your thoughts? I think either way we're going to have to go to the hand because... Getting into this Fortress of Sorrows might give us more information than just trying to figure it out. But, you know, I think that if were there a moral standpoint to take, you know, I think it's a, it's a lot less pointed or binary of an issue if we've managed to... Let's say it's a rift. Let's say... I mean, do we have stones on... We have the Skrull knife, right? Let's say we can charge the knife and close the rift. Then it's a lot, we're a lot more open to negotiation, right? We don't have the perceived weight, <laughs> and I kind of like, of, uh, you know, hundreds of dead merfolk on our hands. And we can make a little bit more of a rational decision when it comes to the fortress, the tressum, and everything that lies beyond. I agree. I don't know if it's a rift that's causing this, though, because if he said it was from whatever the god splitting himself, uh, we're assuming it's the whispered one um, having taken part of his face in his hand. Sounds very much like what the Raven Queen was fighting off and is dealing with, and then scattered himself in the waters. That's not a rift or anything that we can essentially close to cease. It sounds more like a corruption than another plane. Yeah. Look, I uh, could just maybe be trying to look for an easy solution where there isn't one. So, I don't know. I leave it to you. I look at Taz and I say, I think getting in the fortress and getting as much information as we can is probably the best bet. I... I'm personally worried about the Tressum, because it sounds like it's not a cat anymore, but more akin to a wyvern or a dragon, if it is a lizard that flies. And they call it the Shadow One. I'm not... I don't know what that means, but... But, uh, I mean, no offense to these fine merfolk, but I don't know if that necessarily thinks it's beyond reason. Taz, have you been given any sort of insight or inclination that it... Wouldn't be open to a conversation? Um, Tressums, to my knowledge, aren't, even though they're winged, they can't really fly. So, um, is that correct, John? I know they don't really, they like, I think I remember us talking about that, how Tressums kind of. Uh, let me see. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, who, who knows? It sounds like it's not quite whatever it was. You know what I mean? It could be beyond the... I'm looking it up. The flight part. Let's see, snap lock. They do have some fly speed. But it's... Oh, there. yeah. Fly speed 40 feet. Okay. I mean, they're tiny. Like, it's not going from a small, tiny creature to a dragon. Even a mutation couldn't necessarily create that. So I would think that it's something completely different. Besides, according to the Raven Queen, the Tressum is supposed to lead us to the fortress, not attack us. 
Yeah. Maybe the Tresum is inside someplace. Maybe it's not actually the Tresum. Maybe it's something else. Some sort of tiny. Other guardian. I just, uh, you know, we've done a fair job of navigating folks that seemingly want uh, someone wants dead or wants us to provoke, you know, provoke us into some sort of action so far without uh, unnecessarily shedding blood this morning aside. I just don't want to end up in a fight with uh, the person that's supposed to get us in the fortress, right? Right. Anyway, uh, perhaps we rest down and uh, hopefully they can find us a boat or we head to the shallows either way, make our way westward in the morning. Whatever counts as morning. He says, like, shaking his, <laughs> shaking the compass. Yeah, the compass is getting pretty wonky at this point. But so far, I've still been able to tell time, but uh, the directional spinning. You're not getting a good beat on where where it's pointing you to. And, uh, yeah, if you're going to take your guys' rest, you wouldn't have to do any sort of watch, necessarily. Like, you're in a safer area from what you've gathered. You could still do it if you wish. The hut kind of gives you a lot of protection to begin with. Yeah, so. I think I think we'll be okay. And then, yeah, as far as um, the uh, the watch goes or the the night sleep. Oh, are we taking a full rest? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think the pally's got a pally, right? Like, <laughs> pally's got a yeah, pally. Pally's got a pally. I I have no. I, I I still have a bunch of spell slots left, but I have no lay on hands, and I don't want to go into a battle without it. Okay, well, I mean, a long rest will reset the hit die that I already spent anyway, so... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I figured, hey, look, we didn't get ambushed, right? You might as well just segment it as you get them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Recover but, uh, one hit point. <laughs> eh. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm gonna, you know, take out the journal and give it a little prestidigia pen and try to dry it off, and the green one. Okay. And uh, in a and a and a cipher to fee. I'm gonna write F, and then I will write and I'll t- I'll type this out to you, John. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> please ignore the prying eyes. Your charge means much to my companions and I. We'll drop by for a chat and to pay respects to the boy king. In the meantime, get back to your vigorous milking. <laughs> All right. As I figured, she'd appreciate that if anybody would. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. No, I'm, put that in the chat yeah you find that get that writing it that way works a lot better for her versus the other uh aunts everyone else plays with more of the, the the espionage game and igni is definitely not into that oh no this is defee this is defee and fee is just like you know make it lurid yeah fucking whatever <laughs> and then i will just um put in a and i'll detail the contract and the two sub the the contract to the uh, Abelux and the subcontracts to the soul of the uh, unknowing <laughs> <laughs> to other people. Like, this will be coming in the pike. I'll put that in the journal as well. Yeah. Uh, it's not from Fee, but there is almost an immediate response from Igni. Just, wow. In terms of the contract you just bagged. Wow. And then... Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. And then... Wow. But, like, quickly written out and just, like, big letters. Like, wow. Jeez. So, it's, it's, it's a good sign from, from Igni. But, yeah, almost kind of funny. Not not nearly as graceful as the other, as the other sisters. Just because I... I talk up my experience to the gang much more than I actually have. I secretly feel very proud of myself for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, an Oblex, uh, especially now that you guys have talked to it, that's a like generations of information. Yeah. So yeah, like a bunch of first-person perspective videos. Yeah. But yeah, so then yeah, so you you're doing that, making that communication. Uh, Taslin. Yes. Let's see. As you guys are starting to rest down, roll me. Is somebody scrying on me? Yeah. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Yeah, okay. Uh, ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The hut might actually prevent that. If it blocks it, then we're good. Because I, I know the sanctum does, and the man, the mansion does not specify. But I didn't. I don't know about. The, I don't remember the hut. Yeah, spells and other magical effects cannot extend through the dome or be cast through it. Gotcha. Okay. So it would, like. I think I would see that 
it essentially like even if it did cast like the sensor would show up in the water outside of the hut <laughs> like and it would just be like a rock you know rock <laughs> it rock wouldn't rock actually there. be like in the hut because it doesn't necessarily <laughs> stop it from working it just means that it can't get into the hut okay i i like that and in fact you do see this uh well you you can't can you see it or it's only fetter that can see it right i can't but hold on i might roll only i can see what i did not I rolled, I rolled a six, so it definitely happens, especially if it's Daddy Dearest, which means I have a minus 15. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm in the yeah. negative, so he would absolutely uh, see the sensor. <laughs> so basically, like, we should, at this point, we, we, who, do we even need to roll if it's you or your dad mm. in, this, in this case? No, yeah. honestly, because I would need, even with a nat, like, unless you let me say a nat 20 instead, like... I think you did that once. He rolled a nat 20 and resisted it. So short of a nat 20, yeah. I can't resist it, period. Yeah, but you could roll a 20. I could roll a 20. Yeah, so Fetter would see it if it appears. And if, ju- judging from your roll, yes, it does appear. It's just looking at rock. Rock? So there is a sensor outside the dome, like, looking around the rock. <laughs> so uh, if Fetter, if you do see it, uh, your perception would probably actually pick it up my passive or do you want me to roll for it uh you don't roll for okay. it okay might as well yeah uh 18 on the die becomes a 27 oh yeah like your passives are already that good and that yes you do see it floating around there i'm just thinking now like you should counter uh counter <laughs> scry on them to see the reaction hey uh fucking rock and I'll just see, I imagine it's just like a weird, almost like the abyss, like there's just like a weird displacement in the water. Yeah, and it <laughs> it moves around a little bit, like it's looking at the rock face, just like, this is not Taslin. Ah, uh, seems like someone's trying to take a peek. Mm. Hopefully they all they see is uh, the underwater coral show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm probably dad again and I just like in the direction that Fetter pointed I'll just like passively again flip the bird <laughs> uh what's well, uh, a couple minutes yeah should we just let it stare at the rock or do we think it can see us? <laughs> oh it, it'll it just sees a rock that's all it's gonna see right on well then you- let's just uh, since we destroyed the one let's just let this play out yeah, because I can't get in here, which makes it that much funnier. Yeah, you can only imagine that since he doesn't have the access to a scry and a crystal ball that you have, he's probably paying for it. And he's paying for just... It's a rock. Her use. <laughs> yep. This is what the spell did. Yeah, but it's a fucking rock. I'm not paying you for this. It's obviously yeah. defaulted. So about five minutes. Hmm. Yeah, about after about five minutes, it disappears. Fun. <laughs> I, uh... I'll have to uh, keep track midday and see if they're uh, trying to track us when we're not sitting still. We'll see. I'll try to keep my eyes open. All right. Yeah. You guys get your rest, however easy or uneasy it might be, under the water in your dome of force. Under the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea. And yeah, you end your day here that much closer to the Titan. Whoa, fuck you, Taslin's dad. Well, I really don't know him, so that might be kind of harsh of me. Anyway, our heroes have quite the challenge ahead of them with whatever guards the Titan. And I have quite the challenge in front of me with all these ale sickles. So let's do this again soon, yeah? You bring the booze, and I'll bring you more tales from these Demon Days. Hold on, I got sirens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the cops mute, are here, unmute, so... We're... Mute, unmute, mute, unmute. Yeah. <laughs>
La la la. Almost gone. It's better than when uh, Dave was shrieking in my <laughs> audio. I didn't realize how much actually we made it onto the thing. I, I figured it would just be me just saying, shut up, Dave, to nothing. But yeah. now he was going. I've, I mean, I've you guys just was... see a fish. Yeah, because yeah, I'm I've, talking I've like I would. Did you? I've I'm turned into a fish the warriors are... But you see, you see similarly to what Yusuf... Um, Yusuf, you see what Yusuf saw. Uh, no, Yusuf, Meat. you saw what... <laughs> <laughs> it's... Hold on. The information was just a picture. I'm like, I don't need a picture. I need... Yeah, same. Come on. I don't need a rabbit with a horn. Yeah.